Hello and good afternoon CSI 257 section 847 students for the first eight week term at Anne Arundel Community College. And here is your solution set for the hands-on final exam. This is going to walk you through uh, every command that you need to run. And let's go ahead and get started. So here is the reference topology, right? And so I've recreated in Packet Tracer the exact same topology that you see over on the right hand side. You've got your addressing table and we'll be coming back to the addressing table on several occasions to go ahead and, and gather up some IP addressing information. Let's jump in here. So layer 2 switching 33 points you have 100 points total so let's jump on to switch 1. Let me pull this in just a little bit there. All right, so here we are on switch one. So it says configure both switch one and switch two with the host name shown in the addressing table. The names must match exactly. So we're gonna go from user exec into privilege exec and then into global config where I'm going to say host name SW01. All right, so that's the host name for switch one. Let's pull up switch two. And we'll kind of do these tasks back and forth here. So we'll go from user exec to privilege exec into global config where I say hostname SW02. So the host names for the switches have been configured. So now what we're going to do is we're going to configure port FA024 on both switch 1 and switch 2 so that it meets the following requirements to ensure that. So let's get into interface FA0 slash 24. So port security is active. So remember the first thing that you need to do is type in switch port port security. Now, if you see this error, remember that by default, the switch ports on a 2960 switch, which I'm using here in Packet Tracer, and that we're also physically using in the lab, the real Cisco 2960s, that those ports are dynamic desirable, right? They're trunking ports by default. So if we want to configure these, we're going to have to go ahead and say switch port mode access. And it actually tells you, uh, in step E to make the port an access port and to make it a member of VLAN 20. So now we can say switch port port security. Without that command right there, I could enter in all these other commands I'm going to here shortly. They would not be taking effect. You have to have the switch port port security command there or everything I'm about to do here, the next three steps, steps B, C, and D would not be valid. All right, so a maximum of three MAC addresses. So switch port port security, maximum, and the maximum is going to be three. Any learned MAC addresses should be preserved in the running config. Well, we know that to do that, it's switch port port security, MAC address sticky, right? And um, let's see, the next one is going to be D. If the maximum number of MAC addresses is exceeded or a violation, you know, read a violation has occurred, the port is not going to be shut down but it is going to send a notification message out so that's going to be switch port port security violation and it's not protect it's restrict remember the difference between protect and restrict is restrict will send out a message and then it says make it an access port which we had to in order to get the port security on there and then simply switch port access make it a member of vlan 20. So the VLANs don't exist right now, but it just created it for us, so that's okay. Let's jump over to switch one, and let's do that same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and say interface FA0 slash 24, switch port mode access, switch port port security, switch port port security maximum three, switch port port security uh, violation restrict, and switch port port security MAC address sticky. All right, and then switch port uh, access VLAN 20. And the reason for this is that when I am grading your exams, I should be able to plug into uh, FA024 on either switch one or switch two. And as you're gonna see here, I should be able to get a DHCP address from router two. And I just realized that these are backwards. Let me real quickly sort this out here so that's actually router 2 uh, okay so here there we go so it's gonna force me to do one at a time here so that we don't have the same name so that's actually router 3 there and then this guy 
is router2. So we should be getting our DHCP address from router3, right? Okay, so we've finished our first or the second step there for five points. Now we're down to step number three, configure an ether channel using FA01 to 04 inclusive between switch one and switch two that meets the following requirements to ensure that an industry standard protocol is used to negotiate the ether channel link. So we're gonna say interface range FA01 to four. And I'm gonna say channel, whoops, sorry. First we'll say, um, channel protocol and we're going to say LACP and so that's going to lock it down so that we can only configure an LACP ether channel here. So the ports on switch one which we're on right should not actively try to negotiate an ether channel. So channel group one mode passive and that is going to allow us to do an ether channel um, on switch one but on the switch one side, they're not actively trying to negotiate. So all four ports should only allow the industry standard, pro standard protocol that you chose. So step D is for us to put in that channel protocol LACP. Now it should be configured as a trunk link. So now I'm gonna go into interface P01 and we're gonna say switch port mode trunk. And I'm also gonna say switch port because the second part is it should not attempt to negotiate, oops, uh, uh, negotiate itself as a trunk. So we're going to say switch port, no, negotiate. So if I were to say do show interface trunk, and are we shut down? Hold on one second. Let me say we don't have the other side up yet. I think our ports are up, so let's go ahead and actually we've got all kinds of spanning tree activity here. So let's jump on to switch two. And let's do that same thing. So we're going to say interface range FA01 to four, and I'm going to go ahead and say channel protocol LACP and then channel group one mode and on the switch two side we do want to actively try to form the ether channel link right so it's going to be active so one side's active one side is passive let's get into the uh, let's say no shut and interface PO1 switch port mode trunk and switch port no negotiate. All right, so if I were to say do show ether channel summary, you would see that there's our ether channel. We've got all four links and all four links are in the up up state on switch two. And let's come over and take a look at switch one here. So we're gonna say do show ether channel summary. And again, all of our ports are up and all the ports are in the ether channel bundle. So everything looks good here. And let me adjust this. I'm gonna move this over here just a little bit so that we can get some more real estate. Okay, so step three is done. So now we're on to step four for our layer two config. So both switch one and switch two should be using the rapid spanning tree protocol. So now we're going to do some proto, uh, spanning tree configuration. So I'm just simply going to say spanning tree mode rapid PVST. And we're going to do that on both switch one and switch two. So spanning tree mode rapid PVST. And now spanning tree is going to reconverge. And it says configure switch one as the primary. So let's get on the switch one here. So configure switch one as the primary spanning tree root bridge for VLANs 10 and 30. So we're gonna say spanning tree VLAN 10 comma 30 priority and it wants us to use the lowest, the first available lowest non-zero value which is gonna be 4094 because remember, I'm sorry, 4096 because remember the values have to be in increments of 4096. And this will also help us here for the next one we're getting ready to do, which is spanning tree VLAN 20 comma 99, where switch one is the secondary root bridge and it should be the highest and last available value. So that's gonna be 61,440. And now let's go ahead and pull up switch two where we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead from here and we're going to say spanning tree 
VLAN 20 comma 99 priority 4096 and then spanning tree VLAN 10 comma 30 priority 61440. All right, so that takes care of steps five, six, seven, and eight. Now we're on step nine. Configure a single local user account. So username Cisco, we're gonna use Cisco as the username. We're gonna say privilege, because the privilege will be zero. That's the lowest privilege you can have, right, is zero. And we are going to use a secret password. And remember, secret's the most secure type we can use. If we didn't use secret, we'd end up with a type seven. We don't want a type seven. So the secret and the secret password is simply Cisco. So that same command is going to get run over here on switch one as well. So it's going to be username, Cisco, privilege, zero, secret, Cisco. All right. That's step nine. Now we're on to step 10. In fact, we're almost done with the switching portion here. So only SSH connections are allowed to both, or inbound, allowed to switch one and switch two over the VTY lines. And only the local database user configured in step nine can remotely connect. So how do we do that? So we're going to say line, oops, say line VTY 015. And we're going to go ahead and say right here, um, login local, and that forces any remote connections to look at the local database. So this is taking care of only the local database user configured in step nine can connect, because that's the only user that we've configured. Uh, and SSH, transport input SSH. And let's do that same thing over on switch two. So we're going to say line VTY 0 to 15 and then login local, it's going to look at the local user database account and then we're going to simply say transport input SSH. All right, so that takes care of step number 10. Now configure port gig 00 and this is actually going to be port gig 01, right? So let's change that. So it's going to be port gig 01, because on the 2960, it doesn't start at gig, zig, gig 00, it starts at gig 01. And so we're going to do this on switch 2. I'm sorry, apologize, switch 1. So I'm going to say interface gigabit ethernet 01. We're going to say no shut. And then I'm going to say switch port mode trunk because switch one is going to be supporting our router on a stick configuration that we're going to be doing here in a second. So configure it to support the router on a stick, which is basically making a trunk port and then reissued the no shut. And that is 11. Industry standard protocol, by default, the 2960s are going to use 802.1Q. So there's really nothing left to do there. So all management traffic from both switch one and switch two can reach the IPv4 internet loopback 209 address. Well, that's way up on router one, which means that traffic's gonna have to be, the management traffic is gonna have to have a way off of that local segment, which is going to be the uh, VLAN 99 segment. And so what we're gonna say here is IP default gateway 10. Dot, and it's actually 10.10, .10, dot 99.1. So we want to do the same thing over on switch two, where we're going to say um, exit and then IP default gateway 10.10.99.1. All right, that's step 12. And the final step here is we're going to make sure that the both switches meet the following requirements. So we'll start on switch two since we're here. So we're going to say IP domain name, domain name, and it's going to be ccna.com. We're going to go ahead and create an RSA key, crypto key, uh, generate RSA, hit enter. And it says use the maximum size you can. And I'm going to go ahead and change this. So we're going to make sure, because this is actually changing you guys when you get this exam. It's going to basically say uh, the RSA key length should be set to, oops to 1,024. That way your switches aren't sitting there trying to grind out that configuration. So we'll set it to 1,024. Um, and now we're going to say IP SSH version 2. And domain lookups are enabled. So we're going to say no IP domain lookup, right? So if I type something like that, it doesn't sit there and try to resolve it. 
Okay, so that takes care of switch two. Let's jump back to switch one, and this is it. We are done with our layer two config. So I'm gonna say IP domain name is gonna be ccna.com, and then the crypto key generate uh, RSA, and we're gonna do 1024. So we're good there, and now we're gonna say IP SSH version two, and then finally, no IP domain lookup. Whoops, misspelled domain there. Domain lookup. And the version is two, so good. So we are done with the layer two config, or the majority of the layer two config. And uh, the last task, I was actually gonna add in on, yeah, on step 13, and use a version or use version 2 of SSH and so this was going to get changed be sure or let's see we'll say create um, all of the VLANs in the addressing table on both switch 0 1 and switch zero two and be sure to use whoops be sure to use the proper name along with the SVI creation so actually this is going to give us one more step to do here so if you were to go back and look at that addressing table what you would see is that we've got a number of VLAN. So I'm going to say, in, or not interface, so we're going to say VLAN 10, and the name is going to be engineering. And then I'm going to say VLAN 20, and the name is going to be faculty. And then VLAN 30, and the name is going to be students. And then VLAN 99, and the name, whoops, the name is going to be management. All right, now we also need to create the SVIs, and let me put a little using uh, .10 as the, yeah, and that's what we had on there. So it's actually in, the addressing is in the addressing table. So on switch one, we're gonna say interface VLAN 10, IP address 10.10.10.10. .10 Make sure that's correct, yep. And, oops, sorry about that. And then the subnet mask, 255, 255, 255, 0. We'll say no shut. Inter or interface VLAN 20. And we're going to say IP address 10.10.20.10. Class C, 255 slash 24. And then uh, interface VLAN 30, where we're going to say IP address 10.10.30.10, also a slash 24. And finally, interface VLAN 99 with IP address 10.10.99.10. And there we go. So that now wraps up switch one. So I'm going to say write mem, and we're going to save the configuration on switch one. We're going to come over to switch two, where we just did all of our domain name lookups, and let's wrap up here with the VLAN creation. So we're going to say VLAN 10 name is engineering, VLAN 20 name faculty, VLAN 30, whoops, VLAN 30 name students, and VLAN 99 name management. All right, interface VLAN 10. Now the IP here is going to be different. It's going to be 10. Dot, whoops, IP address 10.10.10. .10 .10 20 on switch 2 and let's not forget that subnet mask and then we're going to go into interface VLAN 20 which is going to be IP address 10.10.20.20 and then IP address 10. oops sorry did the IP so we're say VLAN 30 IP address 10.10.30.20 and the subnet mask slash 24 and finally oops we got a problem here. VLAN 30. Ah, I said VLAN 30. I wanted interface VLAN 30. There we go. IP address 10.10.30.20. .10 .20. 
And then finally, interface VLAN 99, where we're going to say IP address 10.10.99.20 slash 24. And let's see if we've got connectivity. So from switch 2, can I ping 10.10.10.1, which is going to be an IP address over uh, the SVI for switch 1. And it doesn't look like we've got any connectivity right now. So let's do a do show IP interface brief. Take a look at the VLAN interfaces at the bottom. Oh, I'm sorry. I said 10.1, didn't I? I wanted 10.10. .10. All right. See if we have any better luck with 10.10. .10. We may or may not. All right. So it still shows that it is down. And let's do a show IP interface brief. Let's make sure that all of our interfaces are in an up and up state. And they are. And let's go ahead and try, uh, let's say, ping 10.10.20.20. Can we ping across over to switch 2? All right, so we've got some success going to switch 2. So can I ping to 10.10.10? Whoops, come on now. 10.10.10.10. Uh, 10. All right, there we go. So it looks like we've got our connectivity. And let's try 10, 10, 20, 10. How about 10, 10, 30, 10? And then 10, 10, 99, 10. So we have IP connectivity between switch one and switch two. And that wraps up the, the layer two configuration uh, tasks. So now we get into sort of the the core of what we're going to be looking at. Let me do a write mem over here real quick and let's save these guys off. Okay, so now we're into our layer three configuration tasks. So configure each router with the host name shown in the addressing table and simply R1, R2, and R3. So we're going to go ahead and we'll start with router R1. Make it a little larger there for some more real estate. So here we go. We'll go from user exec to privilege exec in the global config and issue the hostname command R1. Right? Let's do the hostname on router 2. And I'm literally going to just hop back and forth here between each component. So user exec to privilege exec to global config, hostname R2. And then let's jump on R3. And here we go. So user exec to privilege exec to global config, hostname R3. All right, so the host names have all been set. So configure each router with the IPv4 and IPv6 loopback addresses as shown in the exam topology reference diagram. So you get seven points for this. So let's go ahead and we'll start with the loopbacks on R3. So we're going to say interface loopback 0. The IP address for loopback 0 is 3.3.3.3, .3 and it's a slash 32, right? And then let's also do interface loopback 6, which is going to be an IPv6 address. So IPv6 address, and this is going to be 2001 colon dead beef, colon 3, colon, colon 3, slash 64, all right? So those are the two loopbacks on R3. Let's come over to R2. We're going to put the two loopbacks from R2 in here. Interface loopback 0. IP address is simply all 2s. And it is a slash 32, a host route. Now we're going to say IP, whoops, sorry about that. Interface loopback 6. And this is an IPv6 address. So IPv6 address 2001 colon. And this is going to be dead beef colon 2 colon colon 2 slash 64 and that's a loop back there the two loop backs there and now back to router 1 interface loop back 0 this is just an IPv4 loop back so IP address for loop back 0 is the all ones and then 255 255 255 255 we've got interface loop back 6 which is going to be an IPv6 address and that's going to be, oh, not auto config. IP, IPv6 2001 colon dead beef 
colon one colon colon one slash 64 and then we have our internet loopback address which is going to be um, interface loopback 209 and it's going to have an IPv4 address of IP address 2000, 2009 209.165.100.100 and this is a slash 29 so it's a 255, 255, 255, and if it's a slash 29, it's going to be a 248. Because remember, a slash 30 is a 252. And as soon as we drop it to a slash 29, we subtract 4 from that last octet, giving us a 248 subnet mask. All right, so now if I do a do show IP interface brief, what do we have? So we've got our three loopback addresses. Now we don't see loopback six, right? Because we have to say do show IPv6 interface brief. And there is loopback six. And we're not concerned about the link local for loopback six. We're just going to leave it the way it is. All right, so that's step three. Um, or actually, I'm sorry, step two. Now on to step three. And this is the critical port part portion here because we're going to be configuring all of the physical router interfaces uh, and the IPv4 addressings there. If we if you were to look back at the whoops at the reference topology here, right? You can see this is probably a good time if you wanted to do a screenshot of that. You would pause the video right now and you could screenshot that if you didn't do it earlier and then maybe move it to the side so that you can refer to it. I actually have a printed copy here in front of me which is allowing me not to have to continue to roll back all the time. All right, so step three, configure each physical interface. Let's start on router one. So we're gonna go into interface and I'm just gonna start with serial zero, zero, zero. So we're gonna say no shut and that's okay, the state is down, that's okay. We're gonna say IP address 10.10.13.1, 255, 255. Now, this is a slash 28, so this would be a 240. And then we're also going to say IPv6 address is going to be 2001 colon dead cafe colon 13 colon colon 1 slash 64. And we're going to hard code that link local address. So IPv6 address is going to be FE80 colon colon 1 link local. All right, so that's it for the serial 000. Now let's get an interface serial 001 where I'm going to go ahead and say IP. I was say IPv4. IP address 10.10.12.1, 255, 255, 255. And this is a slash 27, so this is going to be a 224. Our IPv6 address is going to be 2001 colon dead cafe colon 12 colon colon 1 slash 64. And we're going to hard code that link local address. So IP v6 address fe80 colon colon one link local all right so those are the interfaces and actually let's get that no shut in there okay let's jump down to router two where we're going to go into interface serial zero 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 we'll do this interface first we're going to say no shut and i'm going to say ip address is going to be 10.10.23.2 it is a slash 29, so 255, 255, 255, 248 for our slash 29. And then IPv6 address is going to be 2001 colon dead cafe colon 23 colon colon 2 slash 64. And then IPv6, whoops, IPv6 address is going to be FE80 colon colon 2 link local. All right, now we're going to get into interface serial 001, and we're going to say no shut. We're going to bring that interface up, and now we've got some green link lights up there, right? So this is a good sign. IP address is going to be 10.10.12.2, and it's slash 27, so 255, 255, 255, 224. And I should now be able to ping the other side of this link, so 10.10.12.1. All right, fantastic. Let's get our IPv6 addresses on here. It's going to be 2001 colon DB8. I'm sorry, not DB8. Colon dead cafe colon 12 colon colon 2 slash 64. And then IPv6 address FE80 colon colon 2. And that's our link local. And we're going to need that for our EIGRP work we've got ahead of us here. 
All right, so that takes care of router two. Now let's drop the IP addressing onto router three. So interface serial zero, zero, zero. And we're gonna go ahead and say no shut. All right, we've got green link lights between router two and router three. That's a good sign. So IP address 10.10.23.3. And this is slash 29, so 248. And then we're gonna say IPv6 address 2001 colon dead cafe colon 23 colon colon three slash 64. And then IPv6 address FE80 colon colon three for our link local. So I should be able to ping to the other side. Do ping 10.10.23.2. All right, we've got connectivity there. Let's jump on to serial 001. And this runs between router three and router one. And in fact, uh, let me go ahead here real quickly and let's pull this guy up. So this is, oh boy, we definitely wanna shrink that down. All right, so let me clear the screen there. So this is serial zero zero one and this is serial zero 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 and this link here this is gig zero one this is gig zero one this is serial zero 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 serial zero zero one and serial zero zero one and that link right there is serial zero 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 all right, so our EIGRP, EIGRPAS will be 99 for, I should actually say for EIGRPV6 is going to be 99, and the OSPF V2 is going to be process ID 51, but area 0. Okay, so we'll leave those little notes up there. All right, so that takes care of the IPv4 and IPv6 addressing. Now we're on to step number four. So on router three, which is where we ended up, configure the gig00 interface to support the router on a stick configuration. And so we know here, this is gonna be a little heavy on the configuration side because we need to make sure we work in here all of these sub interfaces. So I'm gonna say interface gigabit ethernet zero slash one dot 10. Now remember that order of operations. We got to do the encapsulation dot one Q10 and then I can put the IP address on here. So I'm gonna say IP address and it's 10.10.10.1 .10 .10 and it's a slash 24. And then I'm gonna go into interface gigabit ethernet zero slash 1.20 in cap dot one Q20 IP address 10.10.20.1, whoops. And then interface gigabit ethernet zero slash 1.30, IP address 10.10.30.1 slash 24. And configuring IP, ah, I'm sorry, I forgot to do my NCAP command. So let's say NCAP.1Q30, and then let's put that IP address on there. And last but not least, we're going to say interface uh, gigabit ethernet zero slash 1.99. And we're going to say incap dot one q ninety nine, and this will be the native VLAN. And I need to make a note of that to make sure that that is clear. Let me write that down real quick. Native VLAN ninety nine. All right. Okay. Um, so we've got all of our sub interfaces configured on gig zero zero. Now we're going to go up to interface gig. Zero, I'm sorry, gig zero one and we're gonna say no shut. And take a look at that, it's gonna bring all of those interfaces up for us, right? Okay, so that was on router three, that was step four on router three, and that was five points, so configure. All right, so now we're into the two main chunks here. We're almost done, in fact. You've only got three more steps to go. So configure OSPF V2 on the routers to meet the following requirements. So let's just go ahead and we'll start on router one and we'll go in a round robin fashion. So the OSPF process ID is gonna be 51. So let's say router OSPF 51. And what's the first thing we should do? Set the router ID. So it's gonna be 1.1.1.1. That's the loopback zero IP. Now it says all interfaces, physical and logical, should be members of OSPF v2 area zero. So what does that mean? That means 
the loopbacks, and let me put a comment here that says, but not loopback 209 on router R1. So we don't want that uh, internet facing address to be uh, distributed via EIGRP. All right, so we're going to need some network statements. So the first network statement, we'll go ahead and take care of the loopback address. And let's get the wildcard mask in here of the quad fours area zero. And now we need network statements for our serial links. And one of which is down, I noticed here. So I'm, we'll have to make sure we make sure the interfaces are in an up up state. So we're going to say network 10.10.13.0. And remember, this is a, a dot .240 for the subnet mask. So it's going to be dot .15 area zero. It's going to be dot fifteen for the wildcard mask. And then we've got dot twelve and this is a dot two twenty four so it's a dot thirty one area zero. So we've got our loopback address and we have our two transit networks. What else do we need to do here? We need to log adjacency changes to make sure that we see what's going on and the auto cost reference bandwidth which is in megabits per second, it needs to be set to one gig. So we're going to set it to a thousand megabits a second. And that's what we're going to be setting on everything. All right, so any physical router interface uh, where there are no OSPF speakers, so router one, that doesn't apply. It is going to apply on router three, but it does not apply on router one. Log changes, we did that. Step G, step H, authentication. All right. So this is a good one. So again, it's area zero authentication message digest. And now I'm going to drop into each of the interfaces, serial 000, where we're going to say IP OSPF. Whoops. We're going to say IP OSPF, not authentication. Sorry about that. Message digest key one, MD5. And then the password is going to be Cisco. And we have to do that on both interfaces, serial 000 and 001. And I can just recall that command. And there we go. So router one is now set up and ready to go. Let me make sure that interface serial 000, that we do a no shut here. OK, so it looks like router three. I may have forgotten to bring that interface up. All right, ah, so here we go. So step I is going to be on router two, but step J is on router one. And what it says is router one propagates the default route to the rest of the routers. Well, to do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to declare what's that default route going to be. And so we're going to use the quad zero. So IP route 0000, 0000, and I can use a loopback interface here. And it's going to be 209, right? Because we're using that loopback interface to the internet. And that's OK. We see that warning message all the time. Now, the second step is I need to go back into router OSPF 51 and say default information originate. So if I said do show IP route, do show IP route, whoops, IP route, we see that the candidate default route is out to loopback 209. Okay, so that walked us through the OSPF on router one. Let's go ahead and write mem, save our config, and we're going to step now over to router two. And we're going to compete, or we're going to compete, we're going to complete uh, the same step. So we're going to say router. OSPF, whoops, OSPF 51. And the router ID is going to be set to 2.2.2.2. We're going to log adjacency changes. We know that. Let's make sure that there we go. Log adjacency changes. So um, now we're going to start OSPF on all of our interfaces. So we're going to say network 2.2.2.2 and then 0.0.0.0 because it's a host route. And this is going to be in area zero. And then we're going to say network 10.10.12.0. And the 12.0 is a slash 27. So it's 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.15, or I'm sorry, 31. And then area zero. And then our segment over to router three is going to be 10.10.23.0. And this is a slash 29. So this is simply going to be dot seven. And it's also going to be in area zero. All right, so what else do we have here? Um, we got to make sure we set the auto cost reference bandwidth to 1,000 so that it's for a gigabit length that is being used as the default reference bandwidth. 
Um, it is configured on all serial links, any physical router interface. So router 2, all of its links are hot with OSPF, so we're not passiving, using passive on any of those interfaces. We did the log adjacency changes. Ah, the authentication. So area 0, authentication, message digest. Let's get into interface serial 000, where we say IP OSPF, message digest key uh, 1, MD5, Cisco. And then interface serial 001, the same thing. We can just recall our commands back up here. IP OSPF message digest key 1, MD5, Cisco. So the authentication has been set up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, and look at that. So we've got an adjacency that's just come up. So if I say do show IP route, we should have some OSPF routes in here. And we do. Check this out. So we've got the route to the loopback address on router 1. So can I ping that? All right, fantastic news. Can I ping the default gateway? So let's say do ping 209.165.100.100. Look at that. So I've got connectivity out to what we're using as sort of the simulated internet, which is that 209 address. Okay, perfect. So, but now we've got, this is probably the hardest step here out of all of these. And it's saying that R2 prefers the path through R3 to reach the transit network 10.10.13.0. So if I say do show IP route, so right now you can see we don't have anything for 10.10.13.0 because it's down right now. So let me hop onto router 3 here, do show IP interface brief, and let's make sure, uh, yeah, so it's administratively down. So it looks like I forgot to bring it up, so we'll say no shut. Okay, there we go. So that interface is up. So now that that network is actually live and router one is learning about it, when I do the show, do show IP route, you're going to see that we're learning it via OSPF. We are shortly going to have two equal cost paths to get there. So what I'm going to do is, on step I, I'm going to wait until I configure router three here. As soon as we configure router 3, I'm going to come back to router 2. That way we can discuss what it would look like with those two equal cost paths and how we can influence that selection criteria. All right, so same thing here. Router OSPF 51. First thing we're going to do is a router ID 3.3.3.3. Let's get our loop or I mean all of our interfaces here into the area. So we're going to say network and we're going to do 3.3.3.3 it's going to be slash 32 in area 0 we're going to say network 10.10.23.0 and this is going to be 0.0.0.2 .0 .0 oh I'm sorry I was going to go with the subnet mask of 248.7 area 0 and then network 10.10.13.0 .10 uh, this is a slash 28 so it's going to be 0.0.0.15 .0 .0 .0 and again let's remember that area 0 all right, so we've got the network statements configured. No adjacencies because everybody else is doing what? Everybody else is doing authentication. So we're going to log our adjacency changes. We're going to set the auto cost reference bandwidth to 1,000 for a 1 gigabit, and it is the same now across our entire OSPF domain. Any physical router interface in an up, up status. So here we go, right? So on router 3, we have our gig 01 link that is facing its our router on a stick but we don't have any OSPF speakers down there so here's what we're gonna say passive interface we can't use default right so it's gonna have to be passive interface gigabit ethernet 0 1 dot oops sorry about that 1 dot 10 and then 1 dot 20 and then 1 dot 30 and then 1 dot 99 okay and so that's it so that statement was really in there for router 3 Okay, um, we did the log adjacency changes, authentication. So area zero, authentication message digest, interface serial 000, IP OSPF, message digest key one, MD5, Cisco, and we should see an adjacency pop up here, um, serial 000 between router two and router three, and while that's working, I'll say serial 001, there it is. So our adjacency is up, and I'm gonna pull that same command back up. All right, so now we should see our adjacency between router three and router one come up. And we'll give it a second here. 
should say neighbor 1.1.1.1 on serial 001 going from loading to full. And we'll give it a couple seconds here and let's make sure that we've got everything. So that is everything here. Let's make sure show IP OSPF neighbors. All right, so we only see one neighbor. Let's do a do show run here. Let me, oh, I'm sorry, show run. And let's make sure that, so there's the gig zero one. There's my first serial interface, serial zero zero one. Aha, so in fact, I actually overlooked the configuration of the serial zero zero one altogether. So int serial zero zero one, IP address for that is gonna be 10.10.13.3 and this is a slash 28 so 240 IPv6 address is going to be 2001 colon dead colon cafe colon 13 colon colon 3 whoops 3 slash 64 and then we're going to say IPv6 address FE80 colon colon 3 for our link local all right, and now we have our adjacency up. It always helps when you have an IP address on that interface. Okay, so that is just about it for the, let's do a write mem here. So show IP um, OSPF neighbors. So we've got both neighbors show IP route, right? So we're getting the 2.2.2.2, the 1.1.1.1. We're picking up the transit network between router one and router two, and most importantly, here is our candidate default route, which we are learning via OSPF. So router three looks good. Uh, router one, we should have saved our config here. Let's make sure, yep. And then now let's come over to router two. Let's see when we look at router two, and I'm gonna say write mem here. If I say show IP route, right, you'll notice there's a reason that I have that segment in there because we have two equal cost paths. So what does step I in section five ask you to do? And let me scroll up here, bring it to the top. All right, so that R2 prefers the path through R3 to reach the transit network. So which way do we want the traffic to go? So we want R2 to not go that way, right? We don't want that. We want R2 to go this way. And so right now we have equal costs, right? 711, and that is I, that is not planned. <laughs> There's no pun there, but it's 711, right? So we have equal costs. So we need to change that, but we have a restriction that says using a command that uh, or without using a command that could impact QoS calculations or settings. So using the bandwidth is out, right? So let me go ahead and back up here over a couple things we've done so far. Hopefully get rid of that. There we go. So we don't want the traffic to go this way, right? That's bad. We want it to go this way. So what we need to do is we need to increase the cost of this link. And we're going to have to do the same thing on the other side to make sure that, that this link on both ends, when we issue, and whoops, let me say control Z, control C. And so how are we going to do that? We did, uh, unfortunately, did not do uh, the no IP domain lookup there on router two. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna go ahead and go into global config and I'm gonna go interface serial uh, 001 and we're gonna say IP OSPF cost and there's certainly one way we can do this, 65535. I'm gonna make the cost of that link the maximum OSPF cost and I'm gonna do it on both sides to make sure that everyone in the environment, in the OSPF area, sees that link with the same cost. So we're gonna say conf t interface serial 001, IP OSPF cost, IP OSPF cost, and it's gonna be 65535. All right, so now let's come back to router two now and let's see what router two thinks about how he's gonna to get to that 10.13.13. So you can see it's no longer equal cost paths. It is definitely gonna go out that serial 000 interface. And if I were to say trace 10.10.13.1, 10 
where does it go? It jumps over to 23.3, which is router three. And so that is layer three traffic engineering with OSPF. We've literally just made OSPF, forced it to make a decision that traffic coming from router two, originating from router two, is going to go to router three to get over to router one or to get that segment between router one and router three. Okay, so that was really kind of the hardest one out of that section there. Now we're into the EIGRP V6 setup. So I'm gonna start right here on router one. Let me do an end. So it says uh, the EIGRP V6 AS uh, number is 99 on each router. So we're gonna to need to be in global config where I'm gonna say IPv6 router EIGRP. And I should probably put the AS number there. Ah, take a look at this. IPv6 routing is not enabled. So I need to say IPv6 unicast routing and then I can go ahead and configure uh, EIGRP v6. Now remember, I'm going to do a do show run, and when we get down to the EIGRP section, what are you expecting to see? Absolutely, it is shut down by default. So I'm going to have to say no shut. So the EIGRP router ID needs to match the loopback zero address, so it's going to be 1.1.1.1. Um, all interfaces, physical and logical, should be members of AS99. So now remember, the network statement is gone. There is no network statement with EIGRP v6. I have to go to the interfaces, so let's get there. So I'll do first loopback 6, where I'm going to say IPv6 EIGRP 99. I'm also going to go into interface serial 00, whoops, 000, and we're going to say IPv6 EIGRP 99, and then interface serial 001, and we're going to do the same thing. EIGRP IPv6 EIGRP 99. So now that's configured EIGRP v6 to run on all of the interfaces. Uh, for router 1 and router 2, we don't have any type of passive um, interface config that we need to do because all of their interfaces, the physical interfaces, are connected to EIGRP v6 speakers. Okay. So they should be configured to log any warnings. So this is going to be EIG, oops, sorry, we got to get back into the IPv6 router, EIGRP99, where I'm going to say EIGRP, and the commands aren't here, right? But it's basically log, and I can actually show you those commands. So right over here, and not on this switch. Let me see where is should be right here. Got some Vizios up and R6. Here we go. So if we take a look at R6 and I say global config router, uh, actually IPv6 router EIGRP 99. And if I say EIGRP question mark, and you guys will see this on the physical equipment, it's log neighbor changes and log neighbor warnings. And we took a look at this in class. So that's what you would put there. We're not gonna see it here, and just because it's packet tracer. So we'll skip those commands here. Um, configure authentication. We're gonna come back to the authentication configuration, and R1 is gonna propagate the default route. So R1 needs to propagate a default route. So we need to say redistribute static However, we need to make sure that we define IPv6 route colon colon oops, slash zero. And where is that going to be? Well, it's going to use the interface loopback six, which is the 2001. That's our IPv6 uh, simulated internet, right? So if I say do show IPv6 route, you can see that we've got our static up here, right? And we are redistributing that static default so that the other speakers, when they get configured, are gonna pick that up. And again, we're gonna come back to the, um, the authentication piece where I wanna bring up, make sure we get EIGRP up on these routers here. So on router two, uh, we're gonna go to global config, IPv6 unicast routing, and then IPv6, uh, router EIGRP 99. 
So we're going to say EIGRP router ID is the all twos for router two. And remember, no network statements, so we're going to go into interface loopback zero, and I'm going to say IPv6 EIGRP 99, and then we're going to go into interface, I shouldn't have said loopback zero, hold on one second there. So no, let's pull that back up, because loopback zero is an IPv4 address. So inter interface loopback six, that's where we want the IPv6 EIGRP uh, 99, and now I'm wondering if I put that on the other loopback. I don't believe I did. So then we'll go into interface serial 000. We'll run that same command. We should see an adjacency. Uh, no, not yet. It'll be on this interface here, so serial 001, because that's facing router 1, who's already been configured. So we should see an adjacency established here between both of these speakers. So if I said do show IPv6 route, so we don't see anything yet. Oh, <laughs> so router two, if I were to say IPv6 router EIGRP 99 and then no shut, right? So that the, then there we go. Now we have our neighbor adjacency up. So I'm gonna say exit here and do show IPv6 route and there it is. There is our static route. So I should be able to ping right now my simulated IPv6 internet, loopback 6 on router 1. So let's give it a try. 2001 DEAD BEEF dead beef um, colon 1 colon colon 1. Take a look at that. All right. So from router 2, we've got connectivity out to our internet segment. And again, I'm going to come back to the authentication piece here in a second. So let's get router three up now. So we're going to say configure terminal to get into the global config mode. IPv6 unicast routing, IPv6 router EIGRP, oops, 99. Let's get that uh, router ID set, the 3.3.3.3. And then let's put our um, IPv6 EIGRP 99 command on the interfaces that we want to be running EIGRP. The first is going to be loopback 6. Interface loopback 6. So we're going to say IPv6 EIGRP 99 serial 000 and then interface serial 001 and I just realized that we're going to have to go back to IPv6 router EIGRP 99 and say no shut so that we can watch our two neighbor adjacencies come up. And there they are. So now router 3 has an adjacency with router 2 and router 1. Okay, uh, the logging of the messages. So, ah, router 3, right? So we don't have any IPv6 out that gig, zero, zero, uh, gig 01 interface. So we haven't even started EIGRP, EIGRP there. So with the EIGRP section, there is no need to do passive interface anywhere, right? Okay, so what does that leave us with? That's gonna leave us with the authentication piece for EIGRP v6. However, before we set authentication up, <clears throat> excuse me, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at, and I'll drop the extra credit there. We'll take a look at that in a second. So the router R3 prefers the path through R2. So how do we want R3's traffic to go to get to the IPv6 segment between right over here, right? So R3's IPv6 traffic, we want it to go that way, right? Well, let's take a look and see right now what the routing table on R3 looks like. So if I were to say, let's save our configure just in case, show IPv6 route, what do we have over to that segment, which is dead cafe 12? You got it, we've got two equal cost paths. Well, we don't want R3 to take the path through R1 out serial 001, we only want it to go this way. Right, so let's do some IPv6 for EIGR, EIGRP for IPv6 traffic engineering. And the requirement, again, is not to use anything that could impact the quality of service calculations. Well, what two values are used? Bandwidth and delay. And so what does that mean? Well, that means what we're going to do here 
is we're not going to manipulate the bandwidth. That could impact the QoS settings, if, if any. And so that leaves us with delay. So delay is going to be our answer here. And I'm going to say conf t. We're going to go into interface serial 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to say delay. And you'll notice that it's in tens of microseconds. So we don't want to take any chances here. So how many digits do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what I'm going to say is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now that is a pretty significant number, even though it's in tens of microseconds. And I'm putting this on serial zero, zero, zero. So when I hit enter, I'm going to say do show IPv6 route. And let's see if it has recalculated yet. It has not. So let's take a look again here. Still nothing. And hopefully I'm not going to have to reboot. It might just be a little slow on the uptick. I'm hoping I did that on the right interface. All right, so let's do an end. I'm going to do a write mem, and let's do a show run. And let's make sure that out the serial 000, zero interface that we've, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. So router 3 is supposed to prefer that path. So let's get back into serial 000. zero, zero and let's say no delay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And let's get into air interface serial 001, and let's add the delay there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so we're increasing the delay on serial 001. So if I do do show IPv6 route, let's see if it's going to respect that. It doesn't look like it is. All right, so let's do an end and a write mem. And I'm actually going to go ahead. I think we're going to reload here. So let me reload this. And we've saved our configuration, so we're not going to have to reconfigure router 3. That's a good thing. So we'll let the router reload here. And the hope is that Packet Tracer is configured to do this for us. All right, so there's all of our adjacencies. So if I say show IPv6 route, all right, now this is what we're talking about. So I just had to reload it, and now it is respecting that. So how can I confirm that it is respecting that and that that other route is, it does exist somewhere? Show IPv6 EIGRP topo for topology, right? And let's see, wow and take a look at what setting that to seven nines gave us in terms of what the feasible distance would look like if the link between three and two went down. However, we've achieved what we wanted to achieve, which is when I trace to 10.10.12.1, um, and that is not the IP I wanted to trace to, so trace to 2001 colon, and this is gonna be dead cafe, colon 12 colon colon 1 and take a look at that where do whoops where do we go over to 23 over to router 2 so by setting the delay on serial 001 we've done traffic engineering so that and let me bring this back down here hold on a second let's get this where all right, it's not, there we go so by doing the traffic engineering on router 3 we should have any traffic that's, any IPv6 traffic anyway, that was coming this way would go to router 2 and then to router 1. It would not load balance across these two equal cost paths because again, we've changed, sorry about that, we've changed the cost by manipulating the delay, which does not impact the QoS settings, if any. Okay, so last but not least, and let me take a look at my diagram here. All right, last but not least, we're going to do the authentication setup for EIGRP v6. And before we do that, I'm going to take a quick break here. I'm going to get something to drink. So stand by. 
Okay, all right, I'm back. Had to get a quick glass of water there. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to drop uh, the EIGRP authentication piece off because while we did talk about authentication with V4, we did not talk about authentication with V6. I just looked down, uh, took a quick look at my notes as I got something to drink there. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this off of here. So you will not need to configure authentication for V6. So where does that leave us? So we've got the default route that's out there. All of the EIGRP configurations done. So here we are, configure router R3 so that it provides DHCP services. So for all of the hosts out on the uh, LAN segments there. So the first thing we're going to look for is do we need to um, exclude anybody? We do the first 50 IP addresses. So we're going to say IP DHCP excluded addresses, it's going to be 10.10.20.1 to 10.10.20.50. So the first 50 assignable IPs have been excluded from the pool. It's going to be IP DHCP pool, the name is CCNA. And hosts receiving, and here's what we can configure, right? So hosts on VLAN 20 need to get a default gateway. So we'll set that default router to 10.10.20.1 and that's the same address on our sub interface on gig 01 on router 3. They should get the, have a domain name and the domain name doesn't show up here but it would be, you would put in domain name with your domain name and then the DNS server is going to be 209.165 and this server doesn't actually exist but that's okay. 200 and so now we've just configured DHCP whoops and we don't forget that network statement 10.10.20.0 and then our net mask 255 255 255.0 and now we've got our network configured so that VLAN 20 hosts are going to be able to get uh, DHCP addresses from the router all right, well, that is it. That's the entire final. That's every step, including um, the three things we couldn't do, which are the EIGRP log neighbor changes, but I showed you how to do that. And you'll see in the DHCP setup where you would just simply type in uh, domain name and then put in the domain name ccna.com. The extra credit, right? I might as well cover the extra credit. So this was worth 10 points. So the extra credit toward your score, if you can configure four additional IPv6 loopback addresses, numbers 60, 61, 62, and 63 on router R2, and then create an EIGRP v6 summary advertisement for the four addresses, propagate that summary advertisement into EIGRP v6 AS99. So here are the four addresses that you have to use. Now here's the key, right? And I hesitate to say the tricky part because it's certainly not to try to trick you but this is what we saw in one of the packet tracer activities so in order to get the 10 points both router r1 and r3 should only see the summary advertisement in their ipv6 routing tables and all that's saying is you're going to have to configure the summary address on both serial 001 and serial 000 because if you don't configure it on one of these interfaces, then the interface is still going to be advertising those four IPv6 addresses, which means they're going to get advertised over here. So R3 is going to see it. R1 is going to get the summary, but R3 is not. So it's got to be, it's all or nothing here. So let's go ahead and let's knock this out. And this would have given you, this is 10 extra percentage points uh, toward your score on this exam. So we're going to go into global config. And I'm going to say interface loopback 60, and it's going to be IPv6 address 2001 colon DB8 colon ACAD colon 0 colon colon 2 slash 64. And don't want to do that again just yet. So then we're going to say interface, whoops, interface loopback 61, and that would be not zero but one and then interface loopback 62 and then that's gonna be two and then interface whoops control U let's get this out of here interface loopback 63 for the final IPv6 address is three and so I made the summarization piece uh, kind of 
easy to take a look at and figure out. So we've done this enough. You should be able to look at this at this point and say, you know what? This is a piece of cake. It's going to be 2001 DB8 ACAD colon zero colon colon slash 62, which is what it should be. And so I'm hoping I'm hoping that's right. As I'm looking at it, I should know this. So let's take a look. So the interesting hextet is this guy right here, right? So we've got zero, which is actually going to be four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the only bit that really changes here in these nibbles is going to be down in this section. So in, in this these four bits here. Uh, so what do we have here? So one is just going to be zero, 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 one. Two would be, I'll put the zeros in here, zero, zero, one, zero. And three would be zero, zero, one, one. So it's going to stop right there. So we've got 4, 8, 12, 13, 14 bits in addition to the 48 bits that we already have. So 14 and 48 better be 62. All right. So that's it. And there's no value here. So it is going to be that zero value. So let's go ahead. I'm going to clear the screen here completely, actually. And let's go ahead and get our summary. I did not want to that why is that doing that let me try to get rid uh, I did not want that let's do edit undo edit. oh boy redo we did not want to take that link away okay so we're gonna pull router 2 up here so if I say do show IPv6 interface brief we should see there's our loopbacks, right? 60, 61, 62, and 63. And we know what our summary is already. So let's go ahead and get that set. So let's hit on to interface serial 000, where we're going to say IPv6 EIGRP, oh, I'm sorry, IPv6 uh, summary address EIGRP 99. And what is it? 2001 colon DB8 colon ACAD colon zero colon colon slash 62 all right so now if I come over to router one and you'll notice there was a little flap there soft reset if I say show IPv6 uh, route we should be seeing where is our summary at in here Oh, I apologize. That was that one, the one step that we needed to do that I did not do. So interface loopback 60. Remember, we need to put these into EIGRP to begin with. EIGRP 99, interface loopback 61, IPv6 EIGRP interface loopback 62, and then interface loopback 63. There we go. So now when I come over to router 1 and I say, show IPv6 um, route, we should have, we better have our summary in here. And where is the slash 62? All right, and there it is right there. Now, here's what's interesting, right? So we put it on the serial 000 interface. Aha, uh -huh. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong, I should be over here. So the serial, I shouldn't have erased that. So we did it on the serial 00, zero interface. So if I do a do show run or show run, where's my summary set up right now? Right now my summary is set up uh, on serial 000, zero, zero. and here is my, or did I do it on serial 001? I'm sorry, <laughs> hopped on the wrong router. So do show run. So on router two, where we did the four additional loopbacks, there they are. I did a single summary and I did it, yes, on serial 000, which is this link here. So over on router three, when I say do show IPv6 route, I should see the summary, right? And only the summary, but do I? No, there's ACAD2, there's ACAD3, right? So we've got 0, 1, 2, and 3. Or oh, I'm sorry, those are link. Yeah, okay, those got the link locals associated via. So yeah, we're picking up the 0, 1, 2, and 3 as well. 
and that is not what we want. And so this is a byproduct of the fact that we have summarized here. So when it goes out, it's being summarized. However, it's not being summarized going the other way. So on R2, let's get into serial 001. And let's say IPv6 summary address. And then we put our summary address in here for EIGRP 99. 2001 colon db8 colon acad colon zero colon colon slash 62. So we're going to do an end. I'm going to say write mem. And now let's come over to router three. You can see we had a little soft reset there. And let's rerun that command. Let me save the config here. And let me say show IPv6 route. And now do we see our single summary? You'll notice what happened to all those other ACADs. Now we just see beef and cafe, right? And so that's sort of the, I don't want to say the tricky part, but the challenging part here is to one, make sure that you remember to put the EIGRP or the IPv6 EIGRP 99 statement under the loopbacks to get them into EIGRP and then to summarize out both interfaces. Because if you don't do that summary out both interfaces, you're not gonna. Uh, you're absolutely. You're a actually going to see all four individual loopbacks in the EIGRP routing table along with the summary. Okay, so that is it. That is your final. One of the things that you could do, or what you should be able to do, is I should be able to come down here, and this is what I'll be doing on test day: is basically grabbing a PC and placing the PC out here. And where did that PC just go? Oh, is it dropping it? Uh, let me make sure it's not placing it. Okay, so there it is. Let me, let's get PC0. Let's move it up here. Whoops. Right, let's slowly move it over here. All right, so if I were to take PC0 here and run a connection for, run a connection for PC0. We'll shut that down right now. So if I were to run a straight through cable for PC0 from fast ethernet zero all the way over here to switch two in FA024, right? And we'll leave that there. All right, so it looks like we've got connectivity. If I come over here to this PC, he's in FA024 that we configured earlier, right? So let me come back up here a little bit that we configured in the, the switching section. If I come into the desktop and the IP setup for the IP configuration, it's on static. I'm going to flip it to DHCP. He's requesting an address and take a look at that. He gets the first address outside the excluded range and that's beautiful, right? So let's test a few things here. Can I ping my default gateway? So let's ping 10.10.20.1. All right, fantastic. Can I ping uh, router? Let's try to ping the loop back on router three. Can I ping 3.3.3.3? .3 Oops, that is definitely an invalid command there. All right, I can ping router three's loop back. Can I ping router two's loop back? Ping 2.2.2.2. Perfect. Let's try to ping the loop back on router one. 1.1.1.1. 1 .1 .1 .1. All right, request timed out. We did not get to the loop back on router one, although we did get to the loop back on router two and router three. Let me double check here and let's make sure. Let's make sure if I were to say show IP route. All right, so it's directly connected there, but does router three know about it? Show IP route. He does, and he's going to go via 10.10.13.1. So show IP route 1.1.1.1. Yep, so he should hit that directly connected. Let's bring that back up. Did I type that in? Ping 1.1.1.1. And for some reason, it does not like going to 1.1.1.1. And that's okay. 
this should work. I'm not going to troubleshoot this right now. We're going to do our final test here. Let me see if I can get to loopback 209, which is our simulated internet loopback address here. Let's pull the diagram back up. And let's see if we can say ping 209 165 100 100. Whoops. Let's see if I can get out to the internet here, and I cannot. So I'm actually going to do a trace route here. So let's do Control Shift or Control C, and I'm going to say trace RT to 209, 165, 100, 100, and let's see where we go. We hit our default gateway, and then that is it. Oh, <laughs> I apologize. So. The reason, well, actually, no, hold on a second. That should have gotten out there. So if I ping 209, 165, 100, 100. Yeah, and if I ping, ping 1.1.1.1. So I've got routes from router 3, show IP route. Is it the route back that might be missing? So yeah, it looks like the route back because we passive... Oh, you know what? I know exactly... Well, wait a second. We Didn't we put in the... Um, you know what? Do you see the problem? I totally overlooked it. So we've got a route there. We just don't have a route back because router 3... I completely overlooked this in my setup we need to put in the networks that are behind router 3. Not just the two um, transit networks, the 23 and the 13, along with the loopback. I need to let OSPF know, hey, when you've got traffic destined to 10.10.20.0, 10.10.10.0. So let's jump in there. Let's fix this right now. All right, conf T, and we're going to say router OSPF uh, 51. And now let me get these other network statements in here. 10.10.10. 0 and the nice thing is that these are all pretty straightforward they're 255's area 0 because we pass of the interface but then I realized that I had left these guys out so 20 and 30 so we need to make sure we've got these guys being advertised as well alright so I'm gonna end this right mem now before we actually before we even do that now let's say show IP route and there you go. Take a look at that. So now we've got the 101020 here that we learned from OSPF, the 101030, uh, the 101010, right? So now when PC0 goes to trace out, trace is complete. So he knows how to get back. I apologize. I completely overlooked that when I was doing the setup. So now if I were to say ping 1.1.1.1, it's going to work because now when it gets to router 1, that ICMP echo reply knows how to get back to me. So I can actually ping 209.165.100.100. Bingo. All right. So there it is. Um, we don't have any IPv6 configured over here, right? Um, because the first thing is I, these 2960s in packet tracer, you can't do IPv6. And we didn't actually set up any IPv6 addresses on these interfaces here. I think this is probably enough. All right. Well, this is the solution set for your CSI 257 section 847 hands-on final exam. If you have any questions, be sure to email me. And thanks for watching. I will see you guys after spring break in CSI 258. Enjoy your spring break and see you soon.